Radio VUCA. What? Uh, sort of good news, but sort of bad news, Xe. Mombasa's been found. Uh, oh, excellent. Yeah, but then we lost him again. Well, what happened? I was with Quick Sticks at the market yesterday. We were shopping for a thing to hang on his review mirror, you know, for his new Teximos. Then suddenly, there's Mombasa, a few stalls down. Uh, so we shout, hey, Mombasa! And the next thing, the guy's just running. But, like, for his life, except. Oh, golly gosh, that's exceptionally hard behavior. That's what we thought. Why would he do something like that? You think he's in trouble? That? Oh, he's causing trouble. I mean, your guess is as good as ours. Ah, we've been looking for Mombasa forever. And now we find him, he runs away. What's going on with that mole, man? And didn't you run after him, shorty? I mean, you guys are big and strong. You, you could have easily caught him between the three of you. It was just Quint and Short. I wasn't there. I definitely would have chased him, if only to find out why he was running away in the first place. Ah, oh, Short. Did you go to the police like I told you the other day? To report Mombasa missing? Yes, Mr. What What? The poor guy's been in so much trouble with the police already. I don't want to get them involved until he becomes really serious. Ah, it seems like we might have reached that point. If the fellow is running away from friends in the public market, I think it's time to get the full might of the law on board. I'm not so sure. But the man's behavior is highly irregular. No, no, no. It's obvious he's in some kind of trouble. And given his background, the police are the only option. Not necessarily. I agree with Shorts. Let's hang fire for a bit. Okay, but I have to say I disagree. We need to find answers and quickly. Uh, for sure. But if we involve the police, maybe we'll get Mombasa into more trouble than he's already in. Yeah, but with all this talk of drug dealing around street kids, we need to make sure he's still betting for the good guys. Let's see what we can find out for ourselves and take it from there. Uh, we've got to go, Mr. Watwat. -Wat. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, please do, shoddy. Yeah. And let me know if I can help with anything. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Watakananda. Ah, uh, hey, my short friend. What did you buy for Quentin's review mirror in the end? Uh, St. Christopher. Aha, the patron saint of travelers. <laughs> yeah, after his accident, we thought it would be good for him to have some protection from a saint, Excel. <laughs> have you seen this new book that's come out about Bubble Schroeder by Rala Zinopoulos? No, I haven't. Are you thinking about it for Between the Lines? Yeah, it looks interesting. And you know how everyone loves revisiting an old, unsolved, real-life mystery? Oh, yes. Totally titillating. Remind me again. She was murdered in the 1950s or something. A good time girl. 1949, actually. The whole thing created a huge stir at the time. <laughs> yeah, she was a good time girl in a sense, but very young. How old was she when she died? Eighteen. Not so young back then. People got married at that age and didn't give it a second thought. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I must say, reading it, though, I can't help but think of my own children. And that Bubbles and these boys she was with on the night of the murder were just babies, really. What was the story? She was born in Lichtenberg in 1931 and grew up in Benoni and Vienigang. I remember my parents referring to her as the loose lady from the low felt. <laughs> but the murder was in Joburg, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, she was living here. Uh, what came out of the police investigation and the court case was that she'd spent the evening at a house in Ilovo with three young guys, all about... 20, 21. The house belonged to one of their parents. Anyway, they had dinner and they were drinking, and then at about one in the morning she said she wanted to go home. And on the way she insisted that she drive. But the boy who was giving her the lift refused, and she asked to be let out of the car. So he left her at the Dunkelt bus terminus. My word, in the middle of the night. That's practically manslaughter. Well, as you said, though, it was a different time. Still, leaving anyone on the side of the road on their own in a city has never really been a good idea. Ah, oh, True. And it turned out to be the very worst of ideas. She was found in the Birdhaven plantation the next morning, without her shoes or coat, and laid out very neatly. She had been strangled. There were some lumps of clay in her mouth and throat, but they'd been put there after she had died. Hmm. And sexually assaulted? No. So who did it? One of the boys? No, they were all acquitted. No evidence. Eerily, she had said to Liebman, the boy who left her at the Dunkelt bus stop, you will be surprised to read about my corpse in the morning paper. Goodness. Oh, cold shivers. <laughs> yeah, eh? And the case has never been solved. 
Benjamin Bennett was the crime writer for the Argus at the time, and his theory seems the most plausible. He thought she got picked up by two men in a passing car, one driving and one in the back seat, having given bubbles to the front. Now, she had a thymus condition, which meant she would have asphyxiated very easily. Now, according to Bennett, the man in the back seat would have tried to assault her by strangling her from behind, and this accidentally resulted in her death. And the lumps of clay? Bennett suggests they were a red herring to pass it off as a robbery and murder by a black person. You know, the tradition of putting clay in the mouth of someone you've murdered so they won't speak ill of you. No, I didn't know of that one at all. Goodness, this all sounds very fascinating. Let me give it a read and then let's see where we can fit it in. Yeah, great. I love it when you find a true life story that's more crazy than fiction. <laughs> well, I don't know how true to life this particular book is. What I've told you is as much as is known to be fact from the investigation. The book itself is billed as a life imagined, so I expect there's a fair amount of poetic license. But what really happened is still conjecture, much like it was back then. Good morning. Ah, if it isn't Whitfield the werewolf. Thanks for spilling the beans, Doc, and after you swore you wouldn't say a thing. <laughs> Don't come accusing me. I didn't breathe a word. Oh, come on, Whitfield. Did you really think you were going to be able to keep that a secret? Such material ripe for ridicule was bound to come out sooner than you can say full moon. <laughs> Any developments with your handful of a brother-in-law, Reuben? I haven't had a peep out of the man for days now. Touch wood. <laughs> Touch wood, yeah. Long may it remain that way. Well, if he turns up drunk and disorderly again, you know who to call to put him in his place. Are you offering to sort out a belligerent say, Brandanton? I didn't take you for a fighting man. No, not me. I was thinking of the newly discovered supernatural force amongst us. Our very own werewolf over here could be set loose on him. Thank you, Far Douglas. That's quite enough. Another peep about werewolves and I shall stand outside your window from midnight and howl till dawn. No way. Please, please tell me this is not what you were discussing today. Babe, stop freaking out. False nails are a big deal for women. Like who? Oh, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, me, millions of others. If you want your hands to match your fierce self, falsies are a must. But you already have nails. Can't you just paint them a nice color or something? Or, you know, just leave them the way God intended. Natural is best. Babe, whoever told you that was lying to your face. Nature is lovely, but sometimes it needs to be enhanced. And false nails are just a totally de rigueur fashion accessory doll. Oh, Mel, dude, I love you, but I cannot wait for Pearl to come back and take my place in the control room for your show. I so need a break from stuff like this. Babe, just pretend I'm talking about home economics or something and do your job like you normally do. Oh, okay, home economics might sound like the most boring thing on earth, but right now, it sounds a thousand times more interesting than what you were actually planning to talk about today. Like a huge rock concert compared to a crochet circle. Stop being melodramatic. You'll survive. Anyway, I'm only thinking of my public. Your false nail-wearing public? Yes. I'm saving women from a lot of pain and suffering. Have you any idea how much damage cheap false nails can cause to delicate hands? Because they're kitchen fake-looking. Because of the cheap glue, Gifty. Hey, you know, I know what got you into this. It was Harold's talking to you about this allergy to the glue they're going to use for his werewolf hair. Wrong, babe. I was planning the show way before Harold even knew he was going to be playing a werewolf. Is it the same glue? No, man. Why am I even asking? I don't even care about the glue. You do. That's why you asked. You see, babe, you can't help but be interested. The glue... Oh, you tricked me. The glue for cheap falsies contains a chemical called methyl methanchrylate, which causes hectic allergic reactions like rashes and blisters. Gross, Mel. Uh, again, why do you want to talk about this on air? Because it's important that people know, babe. This stuff is so potent, it's even been banned in some countries. Oh, whoa, 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 stop right there. I think I better pop out and check Harold isn't going to be listening to the show. He'll probably break out into a rash just hearing about it. So delicious, Innocence. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Mm. Oh, the lovely fresh aubergines from your garden were a great start. Yeah, yeah, but I've never had a stuffed aubergine quite like that. Um, it was a bit of an experiment. I like the idea of quinoa with sultanas and then the cashews for some crunch. Nice with the softness of the baked aubergine. Mm, mint for mm. freshness. Uh, and yogurt to round it off. Ooh. Genius. <laughs> You're too sweet, Ruben. I wish Ubongi was as excited as you about my cooking. Ugh, young children are the worst food critics. 
I don't appreciate creative cooking at all. Sometimes I don't think Ubongi even tastes what I put in front of him. Hmm? Just gobble, gobble, finished. Can I have some ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when my kids were small. They were only appreciative when they were eating hamburgers or booty rolls. Ooh, or pizza. Yeah. And whenever Cynthia tried anything even a little adventurous, they were very dubious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ubus was the same when he was little. And now he loves my cooking. He thinks I'm the best cook in the whole wide world. Yeah, you see? Bongi will come round. Mm, I've just got to wait ten years. And you know what they always say? You've got to leave home first before you can really appreciate your parents' cooking. When Bongi's at a soccer academy in Durban, she'll be calling you up in tears about missing your stuffed aubergines. <laughs> Why, Bo? I can't have another child going off to be a soccer star and probably getting snatched up by one of these fancy European teams. <laughs> you never know. Maybe she'll follow you into the catering business. Ah, she'll have to be an ice cream connoisseur <laughs> in that case. <laughs> Oh, sorry, man. I thought I put this on silent. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. Uh, no, I'll just stand up. It's Renel. Oh, take it. Take it. I don't know. What? No, no. Calm down. I, I, I can't hear it. What did you say? Say, Brandt. He's where? But it was all so gobbled and rushed. I didn't know exactly what you were saying. Oh, Pratok, that man is very troubled. All I got was that uh, he had to leave for the South Coast immediately. And then when I tried to phone him back, his phone was on voicemail. Anyway, I wanted you to know, seeing as the two of you are friends. I already know. Did Ruben call you? Is he all right? Mm, Ruben was at my house last night. What happened, Ma? Oh, poor Ruben. There's too much on his plate right now. He came to my house for supper. I just cooked a meal for him and myself and Ubongi. And then after supper, we were just relaxing and talking. And then his sister phoned him. Ronel, what did she say? Ronel went down to the south coast a few days ago to visit a friend. But mainly she went there to get away from Sebrand. Sebrand has been behaving terribly lately. Mm, Ruben thought that she would be safe staying with an old school friend. Mm. But he was wrong. Don't tell me. Yeah, when Ronel phoned Ruben last night, Sebrand was outside the house at the south coast shouting for her to come home. How did he find out where she was? Someone must have told him. Huh? What happened after that? Well, we called the police, but Ruben didn't want to wait and see if Sebrand would be arrested. He decided he had to catch a plane and get down there and make sure everything was fine and that his sister was safe. And? Is she? Oh, but dog, I don't know. I haven't heard from him again, and his phone is still off. Well, I suppose I'm glad that he was proactive about the whole thing. It's important that he supports his sister. Mm. I'm sure he'll be back as soon as he can, Pratok. Well, we can't afford to lose stuff right now, but I understand how important family is. And he just goes on and on and on about it. Oh, all the time. All the time. It's all we talk about at the moment. Oh, fail V. He even woke Faith up the other day because he was shouting at the head of makeup on the phone. Everything all right, V? Harold is driving her completely up the wall. He always gets a bit on edge before he goes off to make a movie, but this time he's being completely neurotic. Oh, well, shame, Miss V. He's nervous. I know that, Innocence. And I do feel for him. After all, he's about to play the biggest role of his career. Even though he'll spend 70% of his time covered in makeup as a werewolf and no one will recognize his face at all. Well, I think it's totally fierce. I've always found werewolves slightly erotic. He's still going on about these six and a half hour makeup sessions for the werewolf. It is an awfully long time to sit in a chair and have people put makeup on your face. Oh, honestly, Doc, Harry needs to grow up. Mm -mm, Miss Melissa, man. It's true, Innie. Hours of makeup come with the territory. That's exactly what I told him. It's like saying I don't need to do a full facial mask, mani pedi, hair straightening session, and virtually a complete body wax before I go on a date. <laughs> Fail. Where is Harold now, V? He has an appointment for a physical. Who oh, is he sick? No, no. You have to do it before you shoot a movie. The doctor has to give you a clean bill of health for insurance purposes. Well, I hope it doesn't take too long. We need Harold to be on top from between the lines because Ruben isn't here today. What's wrong? Hmm, there has been a little bit of trouble with Sebrand and... Oh, he... no, not again. Hmm, but everything is fine and Ruben will be home soon. Oh, well, thank goodness. Because if you had said he'd fallen off the wagon again... I don't think I would have been able to cope. Oh, I'm so amped, dude. This is so insanely wicked. I was feeling so bleak, but now I'm like revved. English, please, Gift. About being able to do the Current Affairs show today. I I'm really excited. Ah, yes. Well, 
Doc seems to be getting generous in his old age, allowing you to do the show while he's still around. Well, I was surprised too when he asked me. He must be taking a bit of strain after the death of his aunt. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm sure you're right, but I think it's actually got more to do with today's topic. Tourism? Yeah. He knows I'm a fundy when it comes to this stuff. So, what exactly are we talking about? Well, there's been this major push by the Department of Tourism for South Africans to explore their own country. I think a lot of people do that already, don't they? We've all holidayed to Cape Town and Durban and Mpumalanga, and lots of people even come to Joburg on trips. Yeah, but those are the really obvious places, aren't they? Oh, yes, I suppose they are. I want to look at places that most people haven't even heard of. Well, such as? Like today, I want to look at cultural heritage sites. There's this really cool Ndebele village near Bronkwaspreid. Hmm? Yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, I went there a while ago, and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. <laughs> I've never been there. Exactly, dude. Do you know how many people probably don't even know it exists? It's a cultural heritage site right on our doorstep. Good for you, young man. There's something else. Yes? There's an initiative that's being proposed that will affect the Drakensberg. What kind of initiative? The department is talking about building a three-kilometer cableway in the Nueni Valley. Good grief. Yes, I've heard about this. Uh, three kilometers. They wanted to rival the Table Mountain Cableway in Cape Town. They're aiming to make it three times higher. Oh, I feel green just thinking about that. Whack, right? Yes, most definitely whack. But I've also heard that environmentalists are up in arms about it. Yeah, for sheezy, dude. There's a huge difference between building a cableway in the middle of a city and the location in KZN where this one is being proposed. The ecosystem is so delicate in that area. They'd have to do a proper feasibility study, so I want to open the lines and hear what the listeners think. Whatever they decide, it's all very exciting. Things are happening on the tourism front. It's wonderful. Oh, that China is depressed, they say. What happened, Shadi? Hish, I thought he was going to cry. Man. Really? And then I thought I don't know how to handle a big, fat, grown man who cries. JT's not fat, so demand. Hish, <laughs> Silas, I am trying to illustrate a picture here. Mos. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I thought if this big, fat, <clears throat> if this grown man cries right here in front of my own face, must I hug him? Must I tell him he's going to be okay? Or must I tell him to be a man? But then I thought of the time that I ran over that little dog with my skorokoro and how I cried. Yes, but he didn't cry. Uh, he did. A uh, little. Oh, for goodness sake, Shorty. Just tell us what happened. Yeah, okay, Mr. Watwat. I was driving in my skorokoro around the park. The park where Mr. Fadaglas used to do his power walks, but he doesn't do them anymore. I spotted old Hoy to Detroit sitting on the bench feeding the birds. All by himself? Yeah. So I dropped off my passengers and I was coming back and what do you think I saw? Waity Dutoit is still sitting there on the same bench, feeding the same beds. Or maybe those beds flew away and he was feeding new ones, I don't know. What's so unusual about that? Yes, Mr. Whitfield, you are not picking up what I am putting down, Munna. That looked like a very lonely guy. So clearly you stopped and went over to him? Yeah, for sure. He was just sitting there all by himself, watching the birds and the people. And that's when I thought, maybe this brother is going to cry. Did you manage to talk to him about it? I asked him how he was, and then he said, I have no words. And then he started to cry. Uh, the business of him leaving our beautiful country is really hurting him a lot. Yeah, I've noticed it too, bruh. He's almost on a downward spiral. A very big, twisty, very round downward spiral of depression. But now, was he actually crying, or are you exaggerating a little, Shorty? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Whitfield, how could I exaggerate over a thing like that, man? Now, Shorty, you have been known to inflate things in the past. Yeah, Mara, this is our friend. This is Hoity Dutoity. And besides, you know how I feel about it when grown-up men cry in front of me. It just sounds to me like you are not picking up what I am putting down. Oh, Shorty, I'm merely saying that... Uh, you what? are calling me a liar. Uh, Anil uh, isn't saying that, Shorty. No, you are, actually, in fact. Shorty, Shorty, just chill, bruh. Tell us the rest of your story. Well, I had some drew of horse in my pocket. So I took it out and offered him some. But that only made things worse. Uh, you mean it made things worse? Sorry, do go on. 
He got all full of tears again because he said there won't be any drew of wars in Canada. Oh, poor man. I wonder if there's any way we can help. I don't think so, guys. He's leaving. Nothing will change that. We just need to give him as much support as possible. So, uh, how did you then, Shots? Uh, in the end, I had to get back to my taxi and he had to get back to his fashion things. Ah, I believe we'll all need to rally around our friend in the coming weeks, palace. I really think that we need to make him feel good about this decision. And also try and make him see that he's about to have the adventure of a lifetime. Travel is the most fantastic thing in the world. Of course, he needs to embrace it. I'll get Mel to bring JP around to Broad Bruce tomorrow. He can have a couple of drinks and we can show him that we're behind him and that we support him. Oh, I'm sorry I won't be around in the coming weeks. Ah, oh, yes, of course. You'd have to do your film. <laughs> He's off to do his way, Wolf. Someone will say, where is the wolf? And then someone else will say, there's the wolf. And the wolf will be, Mr. Whitfield. <laughs> oh, all right, Shorty. It's enough that I have to put up with Denton's constant mockery. Ah, no ways, Mr. Whitfield. I think it's number one, XA. I've been wanting to tell you that I think you'll make a brilliant werewolf. <laughs> really? Yeah, for sure. In fact, if they need any extra werewolves, you must tell your movie people they must give me a shout, XA. <laughs> that I would love to see. Uh, I would make an extra brilliant werewolf, Mr. Watwan. You'd certainly make a more sprightly werewolf than yours, truly. Ah, oh, nonsense, Arald. You're as put as a pretty. Afraid not, Anil. I went to the doctor for a physical, and he's a bit worried about my fitness levels. You could exercise more, bruh. Well, thank you, Silas. After 12 minutes of going up and down a set of stairs in the doctor's room and having my blood pressure taken and all kinds of other ridiculous things, I think I got that. What is the point of going up and down those stairs anyway? They, they don't go anywhere. The doctor was measuring your heart rate. He wanted to see how quickly you recovered after exertion. Ish. Maybe you need to come to Putla's gym and have a workout with me. We will pump that iron, XA. <laughs> well, maybe you're onto something, Shorty. How I'm going to be able to run around playing a werewolf for several weeks, I have no idea. I highly doubt you fellas could get adult in shape in a week or so before he leaves for the Cape. Hey, sure, just watch us, Mr. What What. Mr. Whitfield, tomorrow, Putla's gym after work, we are going to start werewolf training, Munna. You are going to be the fittest, fastest werewolf in the history of Air Mike's Hey, how's the tea? Mm -hmm. No, it's very, very nice. A bit strange. <clears throat> yeah, not, not really my cup of tea. <laughs> Must be the aniseed. No, it's that, it's that other flavor, strong and barky. Barky? Mm, like bark. Ah, oh, yes, that'll be the slippery elm bark. Oh, slippery elm bark? What is this stuff? Oh, it's just tea with uh, aniseed, slippery elm, cardamom and ginger. It's uh, pretty good for your spleen. Uh, interesting. I think my spleen's had enough for now. Oh, mine too. Uh, sorry, Nil. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not to everyone's taste. Uh, uh, would you like something else? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm, I'm fine, fine, fine. fine, fine. fine. Uh, right, do, right, do, right, do. On to business. Uh, first off, I'd like to say how pleased I am that Denton's plans to visit community radio stations around the country are coming along so well. I've also set up some meetings with heads of stations in a few provinces already. Ah, oh, wonderful, Denton. Very exciting. Hmm, great opportunity to find out about the different stations and network with people. A network! Yes, indeed, network. I love the word. <laughs> Do you? It makes me feel nervous. Ah, oh, it's exhilarating. You throw your nut... You catch the people, and you work your way through them. Sounds disturbing when you say it like that. Well, that's the networking picture I have in my head, Denton. Anyway, moving along, I have a request that might tax the booker resources even further, but I feel this is something that needs to be looked into. Since Mac has come to the rescue vis-a-vis -vis the Wooker finances, I think it'll be a good idea to look into enhancing the station's profile. Oh, yes? Well, uh, if you two agree to it, I'll, I'd like to send Melissa to a conference on branding and boosting company image. A great idea. Where's the conference being held? Down in Petermaritzburg. I support the idea. Oh, me too. And Melissa's got a background in marketing, so she's the perfect person to send. Not to mention her foreground in social climbing, which is an ideal skill for... Networking? Precisely. Oh, before I forget, as you know, uh, Pearl's going to be in Gauteng for a few weeks. And as Denton's going away, I thought it would be a good idea to have her back on the VUCA payroll for the time she's here. What do you think? Perfect. Agreed. Uh, gosh, 
There's so much coming and going. Uh, luckily, you and I will be the Vuga stalwarts and stay put. Oh, well, Doc, uh, actually, you'll have to be the sole stalwart for a while. Uh, I'm going to India. India? What? Uh, don't worry, don't worry. It's only for a week. Uh, but I'm taking pretty Lata there for our 26th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. How lovely. Yeah, she wanted to visit the Taj Mahal since we got married. So 26 years later, we're finally making the trip. Uh, good for you. Uh, the Taj Mahal was built by the emperor for his wife, wasn't it? In memory of her, it's a mausoleum. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, rather sad, but uh, beautiful. A testament to love. Mm, she was the emperor's third wife. <laughs> I'm sure Pretty Lata will make that joke when we get there. Not if you make it first. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough about me. Tell us about what happened at the South Coast. Mm. Well, you know the first part. Sabre and tracked your sister Dunn was hassling her. And throwing rocks through the window. Uh, there were no rocks, but Brunel was in a total state. So I flew down as soon as I could. And by the time I got to her friend's place, the whole thing had spiraled out of control. No. What happened? Nothing. That was the thing. I mean, Sabrant had been hanging around the house shouting, so Ronel's friend had called the police. But Sabrant had gone by the time they arrived. Now, having the police there just made Ronel more distressed, and her friend was... Oh, no, never mind. Her friend was what? Uh, she's a good person, I suppose. But she's one of those people who want to milk as much drama as possible out of a situation. So she was making a huge deal out of Sabrant being there. And all she did was fuel Ronel's anxiety. My poor sister. She's on the verge of a nervous breakdown, if not in the middle of one. Oh, shame. Mm, but we got a doctor to give her some medication, and she seemed a lot better. Not that medication is going to solve her problems, but it was good for the short term, I suppose. Mm, she needs to get rid of Sabrant. Mm -hmm. Where is he now? I don't know. I've left messages on his phone saying we need to meet up and discuss things. I wanted to extricate myself from the situation, but now with this whole South Coast debacle... I think I need to at least try and talk some sense into it. Again? Yeah. Hey, family. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Well, you can live without them. You just need to get very far away so they don't keep appearing on your doorstep. Like Canada. <laughs> yeah. No, I should be coming along with you. Good morning. Oh, hi, uh, Hi, doll. Hello, my dear. Oh, good to see you in one piece. Uh, I told you on the phone I was in one piece. Ah, but now I can see it for myself. I don't believe what you say when you say you're fine. <laughs> yeah, Ruth, you've got a typical He-Man complex. Uh, He-Man? Wow, retro. It's like when you were hit by that bottle, blood streaming down your face, and you were like, oh, no, I'm fine. I was fine. The doctor said I was fine. Still. And it's not like anyone was going to throw a bottle at me on the south coast. Oh, well, you could have been bitten by a shark. Oh, <laughs> Guys, hate to break up the party, but I'm expecting a call from my new place of work in sunny Toronto. Uh, okay, I'll see you all soon, all right? Kisses. Uh, kisses, yeah, bye. Cheers, JP. Bye. -bye. Oh, he seems chirpy today. Yeah, we've all been sending him good chi and massaging his ego. And his neck. I sent him for some hot stone therapy yesterday. Ooh. And Silas and Shodia take him to Papros tonight. Everyone's totally rallying round and making him feel more positive about where he's headed in his life. To Canada. Oh, country of my dreams. What? Or maybe find some positive angle. A positive angle on corruption? I don't know about that. I don't mean making corruption sound positive. I mean a show on taking positive steps against corruption. Or giving people positive reasons for standing against corruption. What did you have in mind? I don't know yet, but there's all this corruption going on, right? But it's just become this word that everyone says. People throw it around like, oh, this is corrupt. That's corrupt. Well, uh, often it's true. Sure, but it's not helpful. Say you live in a town and loads of people keep, I don't know, pulling the post boxes off all the gates and houses and whatever. Okay. So all the letters get wet and blow all over the place and no one gets their mail. Mm-hmm. If you live in that town, you probably want to get your post. Whether you're pulling off the post boxes or not. Right. So you can either walk around the town and say no post boxes, no post boxes, or you can do something about it. Uh, make another post box? That's the one thing. 
The other thing is to convince all the postbox vandals that if there are no postboxes, everyone loses out. I'm with you, but uh, I don't know if their metaphor is such a good one. Corruption exists on a lot of levels. Postboxes only exist on one level. And I wonder how many vandals get regular post. Yeah, okay, but you get where I'm going with this. No, sort of. <laughs> Actually, I'm only finding out where I'm going with it as I'm saying it. Basically, it's about corruption hurting everyone. The person who's corrupt and the people who have corruption, what's it called, perpetrated against them. We all live in communities, and if our communities suffer because of our corrupt dealings, we suffer too. So you're taking and everyone is part of a whole stance. Am I? Yeah, I am. No, good, good, interesting. I agree with the philosophy behind it. It's not really philosophy, it's just me talking. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, morning. Hi, Ma. Uh, you're right, Innocence. I'm fine, I'm just... Why do they do it? Who? People who throw their rubbish everywhere. I just saw a man throw a can on the pavement outside the station. And there's already bottles and bubble gum and plastic stuff all over it. It looks like a rubbish dump out there. Why should I have to walk through a rubbish dump on my way to again? This is exactly what we've been talking about. Well, not exactly. Uh, but Ma, I hear you. I need to address the issue of littering on my show. Maybe you can interview some of these litter bugs and ask them what's wrong with their brains. Oh, we can interview you uh, as an anti-littering spokesperson. Yeah, yeah, but, but don't call it anti-littering. Call it something like pro-beauty. Like I said, this is just like the corruption issue. If you're corrupt, you suffer because you corrupt the world you live in. And if you litter, you suffer because you make your world a rubbish dump. Pro-honesty, pro-beauty. Oh, Amanda, come <laughs> I feel silly. Ah, oh, come on! No one's watching. Well, they might be listening. Mr. Whitfield, there's only one guy on the treadmill, and he's listening to his headphones. But Putler could come out of his office at any time. So? He would be glad to see someone uh, doing... Embracing their power. Yeah, embracing their power, exactly. So, let's try again. Hmm? What, what are, are you? you? A wolf. Louder, louder! A wolf. What must you be? Beware! Because you, you are, are a werewolf! And, and you, you inspire fear! Brilliant! So dear, so dear man! You keep getting the last part wrong. It's inspire fear, not expire fear. Ah, oh, whatever, Mr. Witt! <laughs> you nailed it! Oh, Do you thanks. feel powerful? <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> yeah, you will we will when we do the war cry again. Yes, I'd rather move on to the exercises now, if that's okay with you. Uh, no, for sure. Uh, Silas? Okay, okay. So the first exercise you're going to do is right here where you're sitting. Uh, well, what is this thing anyway? A seated leg press machine. It's used to increase your knee and upper leg strength. So what you're going to do is turn around and sit facing this way. Okay. Okay, okay. Now put your legs under this part with your feet over here. Okay. Oh, but what was that? Ah, shorty. He's adding weights to the machine. No, hold on. I don't want weights. You have to have them. That's the whole point of the machine. I'll just put on 50 kilos. No, no, I'll die. So you can't even leg press 35. Ah, oh, I leg press 95 when you are not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Whitfield, uh, so you sit there at... No, 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 no. Don't, don't hunch like that. No. Relax your spine. Okay. Now, lift your feet and legs to a 90-degree angle. But, but, but don't lock your knees. Never lock your knees. Unlocking them is impossible. Well, what do they lock without me knowing? They won't. It's short, demand. Shut up, man. Just don't extend your knees fully. When your legs are nearly straight, hold for a few seconds and then lower slowly. No. <laughs> don't look so stressed out. It's very easy. Okay. And... Live! Good, good, and hold. I can't! Oh, you can! Hold, werewolf! Oh. Great work, oh. and lower! Oh. How was that? Fine. Well, it's, it's actually very easy. <laughs> Not the holding part, but the lifting part's fine. Yeah, that's great. So now we are going to do reps of ten. And lift! And lift, werewolf! Oh. And hold. This is easy. And lower. Well, I could do a hundred of these. And lift! Wait, 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 not so fast. Look, I can easily just go up and down, up and down, oh, up Mr. and down. Mr. Whitfield, you need to slow down and... Oh, you, you... Uh, stop, werewolf! This is like falling off a... Oh, 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 werewolf down! Oh, are you all right? Uh, I've snapped a muscle. Oh. The werewolf's knees are not forever! 
was just so irresponsible of you, the pair of you. I'm very, very cross with you both. Shh, Marawai, Miss V. We didn't do anything wrong. Silas, you and Shorty forced Harold into an exercise regime that you knew full well he wasn't capable of doing. Is that true, Silas? No. Shorty? Double no. And you may very well have jeopardized his participation in his upcoming movie. What? Uh, no ways, Munna. Wow, boys, that is a major fail. It's not true. Plus, we didn't force him to do anything. He wanted to get fit. And if you ask me, he's going to need a couple more classes before he runs around as a werewolf in the wine land. Uh, for sure. That brother is very lazy and flabby. Shorty! Yes, Miss Melissa. He if... needs some basic fitness training, otherwise he'll be more of a weasel than a werewolf. But Harry's not 23 anymore, guys. And he probably hasn't exercised in years. He hasn't. Not unless you count the time he walked from just outside Hazyview to the center of town. But that was just to get petrol. And even then he had to stop and catch his breath six times in those two kilometers. Ah, you see? Lazy! Stop saying that! He isn't the most active person I've ever met, Miss Lee. Shame! Poor Harry! Uh, but no, I, I need to ask the question to end all questions in the world. Hmm? Is he injured? Is he lying at home, flat on his back, unable to move even one little toenail? <sighs> no, he's not. I suppose he isn't. We took him to the clinic as soon as we realized there was a problem, and they checked him out. They didn't even find a sprain, never mind torn ligaments and stuff. Hish, Mr. Whitfield is a very good actor, eh? He's going to do a brilliant job in this new film. Do you know how I know this? Because he gave an Oscar-winning performance at Putla's gym last night. Yeah. Well, he was obviously in a lot of pain. And something could have happened, Shorty. What if something had happened? What then? But it didn't, Miss V. Yo, 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 V. I don't know what Harold's been telling you, but all that happened was that Shorty and I were doing a very basic routine warm-up with him and, and his leg went into spasm. And then he thought he had done something terrible to his leg and that he was going to be out of this movie and lose his big fat paycheck. And that seemed to make his leg even more painful. Ah, I hate to say this, Miss V, but Mr. Whitfield is a drama queen. <gasps> yo, 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 V, please don't tell Harold that Shorty said that. He doesn't mean it. <laughs> hey, Silas, don't tell me what I am putting down. I know what I am putting down. Mr. Whitfield is a big, fat, giant drama queen. He is not. He's, he's middle-aged, for heaven's sake. Yeah, I guess that's true. He's not built to do all that exercise. Shh. But there are men in the gym that are much older than Mr. Whitfield, and they are running and pumping iron and doing all kinds of things. Where's Harry now, V? Well, this morning he had a hot bath, and then he spent some time with ice packs on his knees. You and... see? Are you picking up what I am putting down, Mona? Eh? Drama queen! With the hot baths and ice packs, etc., etc. He's right, V. Here is another big question for you. Is Mr. Whitfield walking around? Of course he's walking around. Aha! But he's walking very gingerly. His whole body seems... Warp. Yeah, because he's stiff. It's totally normal. You guys are so hardcore. In fact, he's probably overdoing it. Just to make sure that he doesn't have to do any more training before he leaves to shoot the movie. Oh, nonsense. He really is very sore. Of course he is, V-Babe. Hey, actually, it's a pity, in fact. Of course it is. You've broken Harry. Oh, no. It's a pity we didn't break him properly, because then I could have played the way Wolf instead. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty! It is not funny! <laughs> oh, ma Hex. Morning, darling, please. Oh, Jean-Pierre, look at you. You like it? Oh, we love it. Why are you dressed so flashy so early in the morning? You look good, bruh. Like a million bucks, say. <laughs> I'm doing a fashion shoot in an hour or so, and I have to look my utmost fiercest. Oh, what for, babe? The fashion house I'm joining in Toronto want me to appear in a glossy brochure that they're bringing out. JP! Oh, babe, that is totally off the charts fantastic. But wait, there's more. What? Wait, I need to breathe. <sighs> Okay, go. The House of Hollenbach, that's the fashion house I'm joining. They've sent across their own photographer to take the shots. Oh, oh my actualness, I 
going to faint. Isn't it insane? It sounds wonderful. Uh, yeah. Is he a total hottie? The, the photographer. What do you know about him? Well, first of all, I think he is a she. So you can calm down, Melly, and get your breath back. Yeah, sounds good, bruh. Oh, you must just go and make them see how you can start your stuff. Who knows? Maybe one day that house of Holland thing could become the house of Oit, yeah? So Sabran's lawyer called you? Mm-hmm. He's a mean piece of work, that guy. What did he say, Reuben? He told me to stop hassling his client. His client? But Sebran's your brother-in-law. That's what I told him, Doc. He also seems to be missing a vital point. If anyone's doing any kind of hassling or traumatizing, it's Sebran, not you. Uh, it's probably my own fault. The last time I had contact with Sebran, I told him I'd only ever see him again with his lawyer present. I suppose he's playing tit for tat. At this rate, you'll need to employ some bodyguards for you and your sister. Hey, don't joke, Doc. I've been very seriously thinking of employing a private investigator to keep tabs on Sabrant. That's probably not a bad idea at all. Now, just watch where you walk, darling. Uh, Harry, are you okay? Do you need anything? Uh, can I make you some tea? Uh, thank you, Melissa. That would be lovely. Oh, what have you done now, Whitfield? Uh, nothing, did, and I'm fine. Mm. And why do you have to watch where you walk? What's going on? What's happened? Harry has a gym injury. It's nothing to be overly concerned about, but he's about to shoot a totally fierce new film, and we need to make sure he recovers fully. What happened, Harold? Shorty and Silas tried to kill me at the gym last night. Are you all right? I wouldn't try to gym with Silas for all the money in the world. He's a machine. It's nothing terribly serious. He had a very bad reaction to the warm-up. <laughs> he had a bad reaction to the warm-up? My leg seized up. Well, I'm really not surprised. You're as lazy as they come. You have love handles hanging around your cankles. And... Cankles? Denton, take that back. Harry does not have cankles. But, but what are cankles? Calves that become ankles with no real clear break between the two. I do not have cankles. Look. <laughs> Goodness, you learn something new every day. You're simply in no shape to take on the taxing role of a werewolf. Denton, with respect, you have no clue what is expected of me in this role. Exactly. Harold, werewolves are nocturnal creatures possessing guile and cunning. Characteristics quite beyond your meagre capabilities, darling. Denton, Besides I think... which, they are wonderfully fleet of foot. And right now, you, my dear man, couldn't win a 50-meter dash against a geriatric with a Zimmer frame and hobnail boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you think it's funny, Reuben? Uh, what? No, no, they laugh too. All right, all right, let's calm down. I will not calm down. I am injured. You seem all right to me. Stop being so callous, Denton. I am just being honest, sweetie darling. I think you need to rest and take an anti-inflammatory, Harold, and you'll be fine. Oh, darling, everything is going to be fine. I'll have you know, Denton, that my Caliban, at an open-air production of The Tempest in the late 1980s, received glowing reviews. So, monsters, I can do. Well, that's only because you were shivering so much on that freezing cold opening night, nobody could look at anyone else. Uh, whose side are you on, V? Darling, you were half naked. Harry, were you really half naked? Oh, please, stop saying Harold's name and half naked in the same sentence. I would have paid good money to see that. But the people, people! Let's get back to business. Uh, of course. Melissa is going off to attend a conference next week. Uh, it's all about branding and it'll give us some innovative ideas when it comes to marketing the station. Oh, good for you, Melissa. Thanks, Rubes. I'm so totally amped. I have all my questions written down and I can't wait to pick some brains. Now, I just need to figure out what to wear. Uh, but as far as staff members go, we're going to be a little thin on the ground. However, we do have Pearl arriving to boost the numbers, so I'm sure we'll get by. Of course we will. We always make a plan. Over here. Hello. What's up, bruh? It's my wheels, man. Eh? I broke down. Well, my taxi broke down. It won't start. For real? But it's a brand new taxi. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Jeez, bruh. I'm so embarrassed, man. And I didn't know who to call. The tow truck guys, they charge way too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, why didn't you call shoot? <laughs> yes, like you. Can you imagine if I'd done that, huh? He probably would have died laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this doesn't make sense. You just got the thing. I know, I know. I just don't want Shorty finding out. Okay, I'm with you. So, what's the problem? I don't know. I was doing my taxi rounds like normal. Then I stopped outside the cafe and ran in to get a cool ring. 
I came back to my taxi, got in, and it wouldn't start. It still won't start. <laughs> yeah, typical, eh? What? Your old taxi didn't give you one day's hassle, and now you've got this one. And it's only a week or so old, and it's already paying up. Ah, it's probably just teething problems. Yeah, that's what all those car dealers say when you complain about a new vehicle. I can't believe this, brah. Do you know how much work I'm losing right now? Huh? Okay, okay, look, look, look. I, I can use my car to tow you to the nearest garage. Oh, that would be great, brother. <laughs> I think uh, we need to push the taxi into that open parking space over there. Then I'll make a plan to get a towing cable. Yeah, okay. Quite idea. Okay, uh, get in. I'll go around to the back and push. Uh, maybe we can get some Chinas in the street here to give us a hand, huh? Uh, we are on a bit of a downhill, eh? I'm sure it'll be cool. Uh, get in! I, I see. Okay. Okay. Put it in neutral, bro. For sure. Okay, you can push now. My China! Hello, hola, Sotty! Oh. Hey, man! Everything okay here? Yeah? Uh, yeah, man, not really, hey! Ah, uh, you're doing this for fun or is your taxi kaput already? Hey, uh, man, I'm, 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 I'm having car troubles, man! Oh, sure, that's sad, my brother, man! <laughs> Sotty, Sotty, are you gonna help us? Are you gonna sit there and just laugh at us the whole day? Yeah, I have a tow rope in my skorokoro. I suppose I can help a brother, eh? Ah, cool, thanks, bro. I'll give you a tow to the garage with a real takes, yeah? <laughs> uh, no, uh, all is good, Xay. Uh, what's this thing here? Ah, uh, it's a back scratcher, right? Yeah, it looks like something you use to get the toast out of the toaster. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's very relaxing. Uh, ooh, yeah. Ah, hey, that's good. Yeah, nice, eh? Wow. Ah, ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't even have an itch, but when I scratched, it was there. And now it's gone, I hope. Actually, now that you say that, uh, wow, hey. Ah, I think you should stop now. Uh, but now I'm itchy, Munna. Ah, I scratched and made itches. This thing makes you a scratch addict. Ah, that's what my wife says. Why didn't you warn me about it? I don't have the same problem with it. Hish, hey, I'm itching. Are oh, you not, man? It's all in your mind, shorty. It's all, all over my back. No, 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 shorty. Just calm down and take some deep breaths. But, uh, breathe. In. And out. There, you fine. Hish, I'm still a little itching. Ah, oh, shorty, just ignore it, man. Have you heard that Pearl's uh, coming back to join Buka for a while? Oh, for sure. I've heard it from everyone. Pell this, pell that. The only people I don't hear her name from are guests. Who? Gift and Silas. And you know why? Because she's a tutti fruity lady. Oh, and... she doesn't like you to call her that. Yeah, well, she's not here. She's tutti fruity a hundred percent. And she messes with those brothers' hearts and brains. They get confused with the love craze for her. <laughs> it's very sad. I don't know if either of them is in love with Pearl. Oh, they are, Munna. They wouldn't say it, but I, I know. They both have this deep secret love. But I know their secret because I have been there myself. <laughs> you, Shorty, were also in love with Pearl? Ah, her tutti fruity ways don't work on me. But I had that same secret crazy love for Zodwa Sparkle. So I know what it does to a man. Ah, whatever happened to Zodwa Sparkle? Ah, ah, she's long gone out of my life. Ah, it's a pretty shorty. I think it would be good for you to have a lady in your life, Shot Shot. Ah, <laughs> no ways. You know that song by Bob Marley, No Woman No Cry? That's my swan song. Uh, <laughs> not your swan song, man. Oh, yeah, it is. No, a, a swan song is a farewell song. Well, it is a farewell for me. A farewell to get him mixed up with women forever. Oh, I don't believe that. Also, no woman no cry is not about not having a woman and crying about it. It's about comforting a woman and saying... Hey, there now, don't cry. I uh, know it's not. Hey, shorty, th th that's what I thought the song meant. Why does it say no woman, then? Uh, it, it's uh, it's in Jamaican, huh? 
Well, it has a different meaning for everyone then. My one friend thinks it means there's no woman that can't cry in this world. Mm -hmm. And my other friend says it's no woman, no pride. <laughs> Even though I've shown him the lyrics on the Google thing. Mun. Very, very interesting. Huh? But uh, listen, enough about Bob Marley and crying woman. The reason I asked you to come and meet me today is to ask you a favor. Well, it's not entirely a favor. It's a business proposition. Oh, okay. I want you to take a tour party up to Steve Guthrie's game park. It'll be worth your while, uh, money-wise. Uh, yeah? Right. Uh, my cousin Banesh is coming up from Durban with his family, and he wants to take the kids to the game park to see the wild animals. Uh, he was going to fly to Gauteng, hire a car and drive it up there, but if you took the family in your taxi, you could make a detour, you know, and show them some of the sights you showed the Scottish tourists when Viking Bonanza was still alive and kicking. Yo, Mr. What What, you trying to start up the bike in Bonanza again? No, 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 hey, sorry, no, no, no. But if you do me this favor, I, I'll be grateful. Uh, yeah, for sure. I love driving my score car. And if the money's right, it won't be a favor, it'll be a pleasure. Ah, shoddy, that's great. Uh, talking of score coros, did you hear about old Quick Sticks and his breakdown? Breakdown? Uh, nah. Ah, shame. Embarrassing. So much for the bling bling. I had to tow Quinn's fancy wheels to the garage yesterday. Looks like his new Skorokoro is all looks and no correct, I say. <laughs> Let up our seas in any lease for her. Tis in train, tis in stasis. Let the lease passes. Funny on school, no for Laura. I thought I'd find you out here. Hey, hello, you. Hey, shoo, what's the time? Am I late? Ah, no, no, no. I thought I'd turn the soil a bit before I left for the station, but. I get into such a dwell when I'm out here. <laughs> I think I've been working for five minutes and hours have passed. Ah, well, you're safe. You've still got about ten minutes before you have to leave. Oh, well, great. I'm glad to see you. Ah, you weren't answering your phone. Wasn't I? Oh, sorry, I switched it off. Uh, so you've come to check up on me? Mm, well, I did think maybe Sabrand had come around and bashed you on the head. <laughs> You've got to stop imagining things like that, Innocence. It's bad for you. Mm, I can't help it. You can. You're addicted to worrying about other people. No, I'm not. Oh, you can deny it all you like. It's only because I care. And it's helpful to worry. If I didn't worry, a lot of people would be in trouble. Oh, so you're a superhero as well. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> it's lucky you arrived when you did. I was about to be strangled by these evil runner beans. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. <laughs> I've been having a bit of trouble on that front, though. The runner beans? No, no, the Sabrant front. Hey, boy, and you tell me not to worry. What happened? Well, that's why I've been keeping my phone off. Sabrant has a bad habit of drunk dialing me and whining about his troubles. And then there's these threatening calls. There's a what? Okay, now, don't have a heart attack. I'm having one. What threatening calls? I started getting calls in the middle of the night from someone who says a few threatening things and then puts the phone down. Well, sometimes I just say nothing and put the phone down. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe you tell me not to worry about you. When what's happening to you is more worrying than the things I imagine should be worrying about. But nothing's happened to me. Oh, no, such... no. You are being too calm about this. It's not normal. You have to call the police. But I know that this is all to do with the poaching case. Once it's over, I'll stop Stop being... what? Uh... Being alive? <laughs> no, I'll stop being harassed. Ruben, please, listen to me now. Next time you get one of those calls, you're going to tell me about it, right? And then you're going to tell the police about it. Agreed? I feel that my focus has been a little too much on babies and motherhood lately, and 
I should probably cover a wider range of topics now, especially since Mel will be away for a couple of weeks. Couldn't agree more. You've been banging on about babies for ages. It's deadly boring. Oh, Denton! It is not. Yeah, ease up on V. She's just got into the whole motherhood thing, and it makes sense for her to look at the challenges faced by mothers. Thank you, Gift. Not to mention that there's always someone out there with a new baby, so motherhood topics are always relevant. Exactly. Yes, of course. Sorry, V. I didn't mean it was a bad idea in the beginning, but as you said earlier, I, I think the baby theme has run its course. Time for new topics. Hmm. I honestly didn't mean to offend you, darling. Well, you did. I said I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? All right, all right. V said she's going to cover some different topics. Let's leave it at that. I wish Mel would cover some different topics. <laughs> the stuff she's doing just gets fluffier and fluffier. Soon she'll be doing a show on actual fluff. <laughs> fluff. And how to wear it. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, you joke. But her last show was on fake nails. A whole show on fake nails. I mean, most people wouldn't be able to give you two seconds on the subject. But Mel could write a thesis on the things. It's too dumb. It's not dumb, Gift. It's fads and fashions, not the economic report. We should have an economic report. But then we'd have to have someone who knew about economics. Ah, true. I cover some economics in current affairs. But to get back to Mel, Braddock, don't you think you should encourage her to cover something more interesting than fake nails? What could possibly be more interesting than that? <laughs> so the carnival says, does this taste funny to you? Hmm? Get it? Get it? Because he was eating a clown. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro, we get it. A brilliant joke. Brilliant. Why aren't you laughing? It's hilarious, man. I think we've all heard it before. Uh, yeah. Uh, so? I've heard it 20 times and it's still funny. Yeah, man, you special like that, my bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are sailors tonight? With a bunch of journalists. Oh, there's a PSL press conference and the teams are discussing transfers in the off-season. Ah, that must be an interesting one. Transfers? You know, in soccer. Why do they transfer? Players. They transfer players. Oh, where to? Oh, is the man ignorant? The man is ignorant. What's a bias cut? Huh? You don't know because you don't know anything about fashion. Uh, I do. Uh, I Just know. Just tell me what transferring players is already. Okay, so every year yeah, in you... January and June. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's telling about transfers? Me. That's who. So every year, the soccer guys have what they call two transfer windows. One in January, another one in June or, or July. And during those times, soccer players can be transferred from one club to another. Yeah, a lot of money changes hands and players end up moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mean like one year you play for X and the next year you play for Y? Yeah. You just get bought and sold. Like a slave. Yes, like, bro, you aren't a slave, man. You get paid masses of cash. But people are so loyal to their clubs and whatever, aren't they? I mean, w w what if you're like a tiger one day and all the tiger fans love you? Or a pirate. Or a pirate, yeah. And then you change teams. And then you some other kind of team guy. Uh, like a swallow. You can be a pirate one year and then you become a swallow the next year. Weird. Uh, it's all about the crew and uh, the what? Money, honey. Uh, but, hey, I have to say, I can never get my head around this buying and selling of players. When I was a youngster, you played for one team and stuck with that team through thick and thin. There's no loyalty in the world anymore. Yeah, it does seem sad. That means the richest clubs can have the best players. Yeah. Mm, seems a bit unsportsmanlike. Yeah, doesn't it? Hey, but wait, you are sort of going on a transfer. For ages you've been playing for the South African fashion team, and now soon you'll be playing for Canada. That's not funny. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be funny. I was just giving you an example to make you understand the transfer thing better. I understood it the first time. Thanks. Uh, okay, if you're about, uh, who's up for another beer? Ah, uh, me, please, my bra. I've got to get some... I've got to go? Uh, no. Why? Stay, man. Work to do. Good night. Oh. Yo, what got into him? Huh? What do you mean? Shorty, you see, sometimes, you know, you are so blind. What did I do? Ah, Shorty, you offended JP when you said that thing about him transferring uh, to Canada. Did I? I didn't mean to. 
Uh, I was just giving him a, a compliment, Moose. Ah, uh, well, it didn't work. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Ah, uh, you better find a way to make it up to him. And quickly. That was another episode of Radio VUCA with Samson Kamalo as Doc, Michael Richard as Denton, Malefi Monaisa as Shorty, Graham Hopkins as Harold, Louise St. Clair as Veronica, and Dr. Hasu and Kartlow as Innocence. Melissa is played by Shelley Meskin, Anil by Huey Lowe, Gift by Mpo Osei Tutu, Silas by Rantabeng Makapan, and Ruben by Richard van der Westhuizen. Technical production is by Car and Gravit, Neria Makwena, and Mbabi Machiba. Head writer is Paul Slabalepsi, with script editing and direction by Bruce Miller. And you can get all the latest lowdown on the show by visiting the Radio Vuka page on Facebook.